What's up guys, Tanner here with another DIY motorcycle repair video. Today we're going to be disassembling the top end of my 2017 KX450. <clears throat> we're going to start at the top, work our way all the way down to the to the cylinder and the piston even. Uh, this will kind of complete my engine rebuild series. For the reassemble, um, if you want to see that part after this, go to my engine reassemble video part 2 of 3 and it's in there. Um, I know it's a little bit harder to find than just having a video by itself, but you know, just the way things were with the rebuild, that was the easiest way to do it, was all as one group of uh, videos. So when you start to put your motor back together, your top end, go check out that video. I figured this would be a perfect time to do this video. I'm taking a little time off the bike about two weeks ago. Um, had a pretty good crash. They built a new uphill triple at the motocross track and rolled it the first two times. Third time went for it. Um, it's pretty unforgiving and I cased it and uh, ended up crashing pretty good. So I'm kind of in recovery mode right now. I figured this would be a perfect time to, to finish up this video series. So real quick before we get started, if you like these videos, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you guys have any questions on any of my videos, feel free to put something in the comments. Um, I respond as quick and as quick as I can and as accurately as I can. Um, also, if you have any any video ideas or anything you guys want me to to uh, make some content for, just let me know and I'll do my best to try and get you guys some more videos of what you want to see. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this top end. Hi guys, when you're doing a top end, there's several, well really there's a lot of different tasks you have to accomplish and the order isn't necessarily so important. Um, I'm just kind of doing it top down because some of you guys may be just coming into this top end to do valves, in which case you wouldn't have to do some of the other steps further down. Whereas if you're going, if you know you're going to be getting down in there and taking the cylinder off, you know, you may drain the coolant right now. But in the interest of time, and for those of you who aren't getting that deep into it, I'm just doing a top down. And even if you are going deep, if you follow these steps, you know, it's still going to accomplish all the tasks, but just to try and cater to everybody who may be doing this for different reasons, I'm just doing it top down in the order that I would do it. All right, so next, now that we got the fuel line removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the spark plug. So for this cap, just hold a little upward pressure on it, wiggle it back and forth, and it'll pop right out. So you can just set that off to the side, and then you're going to need your spark plug wrench to remove this. If you're lucky like me, your bike came with one. Some do, some don't. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and put the spark plug wrench on and pull that out. All right, so now with the spark plug removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove these cap bolts here. Uh, these are uh, M5 or five millimeter. But you can just take these off in a crisscross pattern. Sorry about the camera bump there. All right, so once you get the cover screws removed, the top can come off here. So when you do it, uh, if you just lift up on this one side, try and get a good camera angle here. There's a gasket that comes with it. This gasket could come off as one piece or you can, you can take it off separately. Taking it off separately is actually a little bit easier, especially with the motor still on the bike. So that comes out and you can just set it aside. Okay, so with the cap removed, we now have access to the beginnings of the top end of the motor, timing chain here, cam lobes. Um, you can actually check valve clearances here without doing anything further. But in terms of this gasket, that is a replacement part. Uh, I know some people like to reuse it, but when you start reusing gaskets, you know, you might have leaks and end up having to come back in and replace this. So, Kawasaki recommends replacing this, so I would. Uh, this side's free, however, once you get to this part of the motor here, this gasket's gonna be sealed on there with um, gasket sealer from the factory or whoever did work on this motor before you, if they did. It's gonna be a coating of gasket sealer around here, so it may be a little bit tough. If you pry it off there with anything, just be really careful you don't damage especially this 
seating surface here. Um, but it is going to take a little force to get that off there. Okay, next you can just take this O-ring off, set it aside. That is a replacement part uh, per Kawasaki. Also, I'm going to apologize in advance. Some of these camera angles, I'm going to do the best I can, but they can be pretty difficult. Uh, just due to the nature of the tight space you're working in. So I'm going to, again, do my best. So sorry if they aren't perfect. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check valve clearance. If you don't need to do that, skip a little bit ahead. But if you're here for the valve clearance, I'll talk about that real quick. So basically, we're going to use a feeler gauge down in here on all the valves to make sure that we have proper clearance. But before we do that, we have to ensure the engine is at top dead center. So I'm going to show you how to do that real so quick. So for finding top dead center, good place to start is look at your cam lobes right here. You kind of want them pointed level opposite each other. You can see this one's pointed up. So based on that, I know I'm not real close to top dead center, but uh, I'm going to show you how to find it and how to get there. All right, right. So to ensure the motor's at top dead center, we got to take off, coming down to the left side of the engine here at the bottom. We're going to take off these two caps right here. This is why you make sure you drain the oil before doing any work on the top end. Now, when you remove these caps, there's gonna be a gasket here and a gasket here on, on the caps. This one didn't come out. Sometimes it'll come out with that, sometimes it won't, but um, both of those caps are, or both of those uh, O-rings, I'm sorry, not gaskets. Both of those O-rings are replacement parts. They're cheap, so make sure you get those. Then next, we're going to use this nut and this sight window to ensure top dead center. All right, now, so when finding top dead center, we get a 17 millimeter T handle on here, and we're going to rotate the engine around until we find top dead center. And to do that, there's two marks here, and then inside on the flywheel, there's going to be another little mark, and you want all three of them to line up. So to start, to find them, to make it easier, We've got two marks up on our camshafts. They're really hard to see on this camera. There's one right there. You can see that little mark running there. And you want that to, there you got a good view of it. You want that to line up parallel with the top of the cylinder head. Sorry, it's a little hard because I left this gasket on here. But then on the other side, there's another mark, which is really hard to see. So this mark is right there. This camera's not focused very well, I'm sorry, but there's a little etched dot and you want them to be pointed opposite of each other, but both parallel to the top of the cylinder head. And that'll give you a relatively close idea of top dead center. Now one other thing you can do Take a T-handle, don't just drop it down in there, but carefully put it down in. So now it's actually sitting on top of the piston and you'll be able to see as you rotate it, as you rotate your T-handle down here towards top dead center, you'll see it come up. And that'll just give you an idea, because there are two marks, there's bottom dead center and top dead center on that, on that flywheel. So you want to make sure you got the right mark. So with these two camshaft marks pointed out and parallel with the cylinder head, double check it with your T-handle up here, about where it's top dead center. And now you can come down here. It's really hard to see. I'm going to try and get it for you. There's a slight mark on the flywheel. You can very, very faintly see it. It's just a little hairline mark right there. And you want, there you go. You want to make sure all three line up and that will ensure you're perfectly at top dead center. All right, so now we're going to check valve clearances. So we're going to start with the exhaust side, which is towards the front of the bike. We've got two spots where we can check under here. So we're going to put a feeler gauge underneath the uh, cam lobe there, top of the valve. So for this bike, the clearance limits are 0.17 millimeters to 0.22 millimeters. So I'm going to start here with a point. 
can I get a better view? There you go. 0.18 millimeters, so that slides in there, so I've got that clearance. Um, 0.22 is the highest clearance, the highest tolerance allowable. So if it's more than that, you're gonna need to shim your valves. All right, so 0 0.02 barely fits in there, or 0.2, I'm sorry. So 0.23 doesn't fit. So I'm still within valve clearance there. I'm about a 0.2, just over a 0.2. <clears throat> then you move in here and there's another one right there. You want to do just the same exact thing for that one. So 0.2 is still really snug. So I'm about right in the middle of my tolerances there. So after we check the exhaust side, we'll move back here to the intake side. Um, the clearance on that is 0 0.1 to 0.5, uh, 0.15 millimeters. So 0.1 to 0.15. All right, so now if we're gonna be moving down into the motor, our next step um, is gonna to be to remove the camshaft covers. But before we do that, we need to loosen the uh, cam chain, the timing chain tensioner, um, which is right, which is right here. So it's got the loosening nut there, and then these are eight millimeter nuts, and we'll remove those. Uh, and that'll take tension off your timing chain so we can remove these and remove the camshafts. Another quick note about removing these covers is loosen them in a crisscross pattern. Uh, don't just loosen all along one side and then the other side. So loosen them in a crisscross pattern and uh, it'll just relieve pressure evenly and make it easier to come off and it's easier on your case as well. Right, so when removing this, it can be a little bit difficult because it's a really tight fit. So the best way to do it is grab it on both sides like this and even use two hands and lift straight up. Now when you take these off, there are these guides that sit on the camshaft that help hold it in. So make sure you don't lose those or drop them down in the case. This other one came off with the cover, but this one was still on. So just take those out and set them aside and be sure not to lose them or forget to replace them when you put the motor back together. Okay, so now with the covers removed, we have access to the camshafts. One thing to be careful of is the timing chain you don't want it to fall down in there if it does you can fish it out um, it just makes it easier not to so when removing the camshafts the easiest thing to do lift up on the outside here and hold hold on to this timing chain and then just feed it out and do that with both of them now your camshafts are out um, you'll be able to tell which one's which based on the marks the alignment marks that I showed you before the exhaust side camshaft here has the the line marked in it, whereas the intake side has just the little dot etched into it. So that's how you can tell the difference between the two of them. Let's just set those aside once you get them removed. And then what I like to do is just take a piece of wire, run it through here, and then you can just wire it to your frame so that the chain doesn't drop down in there. So now with that out of the way, um, if you're gonna do anything with your valves, you have access to the top of your valves here. Okay, so from this point for the disassembly, there's four bolts we're gonna need to remove. Uh, not just yet, but eventually. So there's one here, one here, both on the inside, and then you've got two on the outside. One there, and then you can see one right up here. So those four bolts are gonna have to come out, but first, um, we're gonna have to drain the coolant. So we're gonna, drain that first and, and take the exhaust off off of the bike. All right, so we're back over here on the right side of the bike to drain the coolant on your water pump. It's this nut right here. It's not one of the attachment nuts. It's just this nut here on the bottom, which is an eight millimeter. So you just wanna crack that open carefully, hold some sort of container up and just slowly open it and it'll drain out. You can catch it in the container a bigger one works better if you have one, like a ice cream jug or something. And of course, don't let your dog or your kids anywhere near this stuff, it's not good. All right, so just be careful when you're moving this hose. I mean, you've drained most of the coolant out, but there still may be a little residual fluid in there, so 
just uh, maybe put a paper towel underneath it or something and just go slow with it. All right. Just move that out of the way. And then the next thing we're going to do is come in here and remove the exhaust, the clamps, and then this whole front portion of your exhaust, you can slide out to the front. And then you don't have to take the back off. All right, so after you've gotten the exhaust removed, we're gonna take off the motor mounts here on both sides. That way, if we need to take this upper part of the top end off here for access down to the cylinder and potentially the piston or whatever you're doing down there, um, we can we can take that off. So we'll take the motor mounts off and then we'll come back to the four bolts I talked about a little bit ago. You can see one right there and there's one up right there as well. All right guys, what I've done is I went ahead and took the subframe bolts out. So you got two up top and these two down here and I'm gonna actually slide the subframe off just to make it easier for me to film. And uh, you can do this trick too up here where the air box comes in where the air feeds in. It's got a hose clamp. If you just loosen that and then take the subframe bolts off, this, I'm trying to get a view of it, right here, you can just pull off and it'll slide out. So your throttle body will still be attached to your top end, but it'll just make it easier to get in there and access if you want to go that way. All right, so this just makes life much easier. Now you can see I got the air box off. Here's back your throttle body. There is one attachment. Um, right here for the air box for the DFI system. So make sure you remove that And now we can move on to taking the rest of the top end off. All right So before removing the four big bolts, we want to loosen these two and remove these two bolts here as well. They're a hex head um, I think they're a five millimeter, but loosen these and then we'll move on to the four bolts up top All right, so now the next step is gonna be removing the four bolts. I told you about one there one there Here's one here and one right there so remember to loosen these again in a crisscross pattern, especially, you know, with aluminum parts on a motor, you just want to make sure you get even stress on them when you're either removing or putting something back on. All right, guys, so now we got all the bolts out. Um, the top end should be pretty loose and you can take that out. So just gonna have to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. It does take a little pressure to come out of there. There you go. And once you do remember if you wired your timing chain up here um, just go ahead and unwire that but keep pressure on it and as you bring this up you can feed it down through and hold on to it there and then it's going to take a little maneuvering to fish your top end out But once you remove it, you'll have access to your piston. Um, and then we can go from okay, there. Next, to remove the cylinder. This part's pretty easy. Just uh, remove this bolt here. That should be the only one left holding it on. And then just very carefully help it up. A little back and forth pressure if you need to. You don't just want to yank it off. So just go easy, help it out. Make sure your rings don't go flying, which they shouldn't. And there you go, cylinder's off. So when removing the piston, it has two snap rings. I got it out already just for demonstration purposes. Two snap rings, one on each side to hold it. Um, it's got this little notch, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, that notch right there, which will allow you to get in there. Um, a screwdriver, as long as you're really careful not to chew these edges up, isn't a bad way to go. Or ideally if you have a pick, um, you can get in there a lot easier. One thing to note, make dang sure you stuff the uh, Pull here into the crank with I've got a rag and then two um, paper towels over it because these things tend to go flying put something in there to block it because <clears throat> if you lose one of these things down in the case you got to split it unless you're lucky enough to 
where it falls where you can see it, but chances are it's going to go way down into the bottom. So take that out. Next. Just push it from the other side. Got the piston rod here. Just slides out and it just comes right off. All right guys, so that's a top end assembly of a 2017 KX450. And again, if you wanna see the, the rest of it, the reassemble, go to my engine assembly part two or three video. And I talk more about piston rings, you know, inspecting your piston and that one, and then do the entire reassembly of the top end. And if you're doing any other rebuilds, bottom end and everything, that every, everything on a motor rebuild is in that video series um, from the case split all the way back to the, to the reassemble. Um, so check that out. And again, if you like these videos, uh, please subscribe. Um, and one more time, any, any questions you have, feel free to let me know. Do my best to answer. And uh, if you have any suggestions for videos, let me know and I'll, I'll try and make some for you guys. Thanks for watching.